In this video, we're going to do some more examples uh, involving graphs of the sine and cosine functions. So let's go down here to the first example. Let's just remind ourselves. So if we want to graph a sine of bx or a cos of bx, you can always assume b is positive because if it's not, if it if it's negative, you can either pull out the negative in the case of sine or just remove the negative in the case of cosine. Um, so for positive b's, it represents the horizontal compression or spread, uh, stretch, and it affects the period. Um, so the period becomes 2 pi divided by b. The a value, if it's positive, represents a vertical compression or stretch. Uh, if it's negative, it also, in addition, uh, is a reflection over the x-axis. And the absolute value of a is what we call the amplitude. Okay, so here's an example. Um, so we can... Uh, because sine is um, an odd function, we can pull out this negative. So this is negative 2 sine of positive 3x. So this is since sine is an odd function. Okay, so that means that my a value is negative 2 and my b value is 3. So um, the amplitude... is the absolute value of the a value. So that's going to be the absolute value of minus 2, so 2. And the period is going to be 2 pi divided by our b value, so 2 pi over 3. Okay, so for that one. Um, okay, so then let's do a sketch here. So here we are just changing the period for this one. So our b, so a is 1. Okay, b is 3, which means that the period is 2 pi divided by 3. So we want two cycles. Okay, so what we do is, so the sine and cosine graphs have four parts. Okay, so we split it up into four. We want two cycles, so it's going to be eight parts. Okay, so the first four parts, this is going to be one period. So by the end of it, we're going to be to 2 pi by 3. Okay, now if I split 2 pi by 3 in half, that's pi by 3. If I split that in half, that's pi by 6. Okay, and then, uh, so each step, each of these steps here is going to be pi by 6. So this part here is pi by 3 plus pi by 6. So to get one more step, so that's going to be 4 pi... Um, so let me just write this down. So it's pi by 3 plus another pi by 6. So times this by, so this is going to be 3 pi by 6 or pi by 2. Okay, so that's what goes here. So this is actually pi by 2. Okay, um, and then we have 1 and negative 1. Um, so then I want to keep adding pi by 6. So um, this one is 2 pi, I need to write these down. So 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 6. So this part is actually 4 pi by 6 if I make a common denominator. So it's going to be 5 pi by 6. Okay, when I add um, pi by 6 to it. If I add another pi by 6, I get to pi because it's 6 pi by 6. Adding another pi by 6, that's going to be 7 pi by 6. And another pi by 6, that's going to be 8 pi by 6, which is actually 4 pi by 3. Okay, now we want to do the graph. So it's a sine graph. So at 0, it's at 0. And then it goes up to its maximum, which is 1 here because A is 1. That's the amplitude. And then it comes back down to 0. And then it goes to its minimum, negative 1 and then back down up to zero. Okay, so this, the shape is going to look like that. Okay, so this here, the first four steps, this is um, one cycle, okay, or one period. And then the next four steps is going to be the second cycle. So we just keep going in that fashion. So we go up to the maximum, down to the zero, down to the minimum, up to the max, up to zero, sorry. So it keeps going 
like that. So that would be the graph here for sine of 3x. So it looks exactly the same as the, the graph for sine x. It's just that the labelings are different. Okay, so because we didn't split at, say, pi by 2 for each step, each step is actually pi by 6 um, because the period's been affected. Okay, so that's how, that's one way you can graph these things. Um, let's try another one. Okay, so here we have an a value. So our a is negative 3, which means that the amplitude is going to be absolute value of that, so positive 3. And our b value is pi. So that means the period, which we can call p, is going to be 2 pi over pi, which is going to be 2. Okay, so it doesn't depend on pi here. So you can label them um, with integers. Now, because I only have 8 spots and I want 2 cycles, I want 1 cycle to be to get to 2. Okay, so this is one cycle. Okay, and then the second cycle. Okay, is another one and then it's going to that's going to take to 4. So if I split that in half, these are where the integers are going to go. And then here this splitting this in half is 1 half. This is going to be 3 over 2. This is 5 over 2 and 7 over 2, okay? And then same idea, so for sine, at 0, we're at 0, okay? Now at 1 half, that's the first step of the quarter, I should be at the maximum 1, but because my amplitude is 3, I'm actually going up to 3. Okay, so it's going to be up here at 3, Oh, shoot. Uh, I missed the negative. Um, so I actually, let's get rid of that. Sorry. Um, I actually want to add here. So a is less than zero implies that we also reflect over the x-axis. Um, so don't forget that. So when you're supposed to go up, we're actually going to go down. Okay, so that means we go down first, and then we get back to zero, and then we go up to our maximum, and then back to zero. So this is what one cycle of this graph is going to look like. Oh, that wasn't very good. Okay, and then keep going with this pattern. So then down, middle, up, middle. So then it goes down to this one, up to that one, keep going up, and then back down. And then it keeps going like that. Okay, so that's the graph here. Um, so we had to reflect it, which is why we went the opposite way. Um, okay, so now the next one is very, very similar to this. Okay, so notice that this part is the example 5. Right, that was number 5. Yeah, so that's example 5. So all this does, I wanted to get that plus 2 as well. Um, so what this is going to do is shift um, up because we're adding uh, vertically uh, two units. So what the, instead of the middle of the thing being at, z, at y equals 0, we're going to move the middle to y equals 2. Okay, This is not an asymptote. It's just going to be the, how far we go. So instead of being at 0, 0, now I'm at 0, 2. And then we went down, and it was 3. So I want to go 3 away from this middle. So that's where that point's going to be. So this is at 1 half and negative 1. And then I come up to the middle again. And then I go 3, because our A value, or our amplitude is 3. I go 3 from the middle, and then back down. So all this has done is shift our graph um, from part example 5 up 2 units. But this, the graph is exactly the same. Okay, It's just been shifted up 2 units. So this, this point here is 0, 2. 
This one is 1, 2. This one is 3 over 2 and 5. Okay, so 2, 3, 4, this is 5. Okay, um, so then remember this was 1 half, 1, 3 over 2, 2, 5 over 2, 3, 7 over 2, 4. Okay, and then so we go down to here, and then back up to the middle, and then back up to the top, and then down to the middle again. And it just keeps going. This should be rounded up at the top here. Okay, so that's two cycles of this. So this point up here is 7 over 2 and 5. And again, it keeps going on that side as well. But that's two cycles. Okay, so we went up 3 from the middle. So this distance here, this is the amplitude. So that's why we're doing that. 3 from each. Um, so the amplitude is still the absolute value of the A, which is 3. Okay, so it's basically we took, took the graph. So the idea here is we shifted our graph from example 5 up 2 units. So remember that the vertical translations always come at the end. Okay, so that's why we were able, we already did this part, and this thing is supposed to be at the end anyway. So we took our one from here, and all we did was shift all of these points up to. Okay, so that's all that happened there. Okay, so that's how we can graph these transformations. Now, we haven't done the horizontal shifts yet. Um, those are a bit harder because of the period, so when there's multiple things going on there. So we will see that uh, late in a later section.